let's talk about rolling in surf. First, I want to thank everybody that has joined the membership part of the channel. Thank you so much. It's been great starting conversations together and moving forward with office hours, as well as as soon as these office hours that we've been starting get recorded, I will be able to put them into the archive and everyone can access those as well. So in order to get into the rolling and surfing and all that, let's, let's just get out of the way a couple of thoughts on just safety. Uh, the things that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to assume that everybody listening He's already addressing all of these. And if I miss anything, please just use common sense when it comes to playing and surf. Things like wearing the right gear, having your PFD, wearing your helmet, going to a location that is a good idea for you, your group, whoever you're surfing with to play in, knowing what the forecast is like, understanding what the weather is doing, understanding what the swell is doing, and how the tides and the swell and the conditions that particular day are going to affect the location you're in. Because conditions really don't care about us. We are irrelevant. And even the smallest waves or ripples can really do a lot of damage. So please, if you're just getting into paddling and you really would like to know more about playing in surf, playing in rough conditions, going out surfing, do so in a safe manner with either other buddies that know what they're doing, other paddlers, uh, instructors, clubs, uh, events, ask someone that has been thrown around like a rag doll by the surf, window shaded, slammed against the ground, and have seen injuries with the surf. Please just do everything you can to enjoy rough water and surf safely. So now let's go through six things that I think are worth considering uh, when rolling in surf, when upping your game, when practicing your rolling in surf. So the first one is not about technique or anything like that per se, but sometimes when it comes to rolling, the preparation might be key. So maybe consider before you get to the active moving water, if you're launching and it's calm, maybe do a roll or two just to get wet, just to understand what the temperature of the water's like so that there's no surprises if you get knocked over by a wave. We also notice that if paddlers go for a roll or get wet at the beginning of the session, they end up pushing themselves a little more because they're already wet. They've been upside down. It's not as big a deal as if you spend an entire session or you spend the entire day and you haven't gotten wet yet. There might be a little bit of those mind games of, going under. So if you get a roll out of the way before you go out and play, a little bit of that edge might come off. So then mentally, you might be a little more prepared uh, if you find yourself upside down in the fun stuff. Tied to this one, the second thing is rolling a lot of times is really a mental game, right? It's so easy to get into our heads about it. You might be doing an amazing roll in a pool session. You might be doing an amazing roll when you're in a calm lake. But then once you get into the waves, you might not feel like it's there or I don't know if the wave hits me just right or whatever. So I find it a good thing to do is either the day before or on the drive there or just I like to visualize my role ahead of time. I know that the muscle memory is going to be there for me, but I also want in my head uh, to be in the right place because a lot of times when a wave knocks you over or if you fall off a wave or you just capsize in general in fun, rough water, uh, a lot of stuff is going through your minds. So for me, if I've already dealt with whatever comes in the role and I'm calm and I'm ready for it, I'm not thinking about it at all. If I find myself upside down, muscle memory takes me to that setup position and then I come out of it. So just trying to get into the zone. Uh, before you're actually playing in the water and dealing with so many things. I just find it easier if I've already kind of done my homework with that so that if it's a surprise, my role will be there for me without thinking about it. Along with that mental game, this one applies just for rolling in general, but even more so when you're in rough water, when you're in surf. And that is that we have a lot more time than we think when we're upside down. Uh, I think it's an really interesting phenomenon that happens whenever we're upside down or we're getting ready for a roll and, or when we're surfing or when we do lots of other activities where, you know, adrenaline's pumping and, and we're only focused on that one thing. You know, it, it really seems like time slows down and a little tiny fraction uh, of a second in our minds feels 
so long. I, I remember when I used to play in a band, when we would get up and play a song, if we recorded it, we'd always, live, we'd always play way faster than we would think. And it's because once you're in the moment and you know it's all pumping and you're you're excited, you end up thinking time is slightly different. And same thing when you're upside down in your kayak. A wave just knocked you over. And most of the time, we might go for a roll before we're really ready. So it's really good to think about just how much time we have really when we're upside down. When we're learning to roll, one of the things we always work on is going upside down and just hanging out for a while. Doesn't matter if it's five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20 seconds, whatever. Just be comfortable upside down, look around, especially if it's in a pool and you're wearing goggles. It's great to just hang out, get your bearings, understand which way you're gonna set up on, and then realize that you have a lot of time. We are able to hold our breath usually for quite a long time versus what it feels like, right? And I know that if you're, let's say in the Great Lakes, a lot of times the time between waves is really short, especially if they're wind waves, that period is gonna be so, so short. But most of the time in surf, you have several seconds, let's say six, seven, eight, 10, 15 seconds between each wave. And if you just, let's say in a pool, just experiment, capsize, take a beat, set up and then roll, the actual roll takes very little time. And so that means if you give yourself time, especially your kayak, to settle down after whatever happened, let's say a, maybe a wave knocked you over or it was just a little too bumpy and you went over, if you set up and if you set up and roll too fast, you might not be completely upside down. You might not be rolling on the right side, especially when a wave is going through, there's so much foam and air and all this stuff going on and it's hard to really understand what's going on. But if you just give it a couple of seconds, wait for the kayak to really settle in, be upside down, set up, and then get your roll, you have more time than you think. And if you take your time to make sure that you are indeed settled and ready for the roll, there's less of a chance that you're going to try a roll when you're still sideways, try a roll when you're still not completely upside down, or maybe you're setting up and maybe the blade is nowhere near the surface of the water. So just realizing that you have some time between those waves and use them accordingly, that tied with the mental game, that tied with everything else, will give you a higher probability of getting your roll down. I, I've seen a lot of missed rolls because they weren't completely flat or maybe or maybe the blade was nowhere near the surface on the setup or there's many things that could happen if you just rush through it. So you've got time. And tied to that, let's go to the next one, which is slowing things down. If we've got time, let's then slow down our process to make sure we do it right. Because if you miss your roll, then you're gonna get in your head, oh no, I already wasted all this time and I wasted my breath and now I really have to nail it. I'm now, maybe the wave is on top of me. I feel like I have a better probability of getting it down and getting a good solid roll if I just slow it down, go back to basics, focus on technique, and really exaggerate all the things that make my roll successful. So for example, I know that if I don't roll for a while, I start cheating, especially my right side is stronger. So a lot of times I'll try sitting up before my boat is completely flat or before I'm completely out of the water because I want to get up and be ready for that next wave. And if I rush it, that's usually when my roll fails. Same thing as, for example, that's one of the reasons I really love paddling and surf with a Greenland paddle. I feel really comfortable with my roll, especially it's easy for me to go to an extended roll almost immediately after a capsize. No matter what, I feel comfortable with lots of motion around me to slide my hands around on the paddle, extend, and then go right back to that basics of how I want to do my particular roll. However, in whichever roll you've learned that you have down, don't be afraid to going back to your basics and getting that roll in. Please ensure that whatever roll you're using is indeed a safe one for you to be upside down. 
in conditions because there might be rocks, there might be, just try to keep your face, try to keep your body safe when you're upside down. Stay tucked in in your setup position and protect your body when you're upside down. But whatever role you use, just take your time, slow things down, you have time, you're mentally prepared. The role itself, after you get into your setup position, that doesn't really take much time. And if you have a bit of a period between waves, you can slow down to make sure you're settled and then snap that roll. And usually that'll give you some time to be ready and be aware for the next one. In the clip that I'm showing right now, Catherine and I were discussing heading back and how we were gonna tell everybody in the group that we we're gonna head back. And you can tell I'm looking and keeping track of what's going on. And then out of nowhere, this one wave stood up and then closed out right on me and knocked me over. As it happens, first I try to save it and when I can't, I just go right in for the tuck. You can see my paddle swing past the camera. I extended the paddle, went for the setup on the other side, and then just rolled up and was ready for whatever came next. But this is a great example of, I wasn't expecting this wave to knock me over, but I just went with it. And I went with the same motion in the way that it knocked me over. And if something else was coming in the same direction, I set up on that side. I waited until I was ready. And then I was able to snap it up and even, and I believe I even used a little bit of the momentum of going under. The next thing to consider, and I know a lot of people might disagree with this, but this is a perfect example of when uh, it's great to have a roll on both sides. And I dislike the notion of saying this is my strong side, this is my weak side. I don't think it's strong or weak. I think, I think it's simply how much practice have you done on one side versus the other? How much time have you spent on both sides? Because I always talk about this. I'm a righty, so the role on the right side was my first role, and it's my stronger role. However, my left side is truly my stronger role because it is my weaker side. So I do a better job of concentrating when I'm rolling on the left side versus when I roll on the right side and I cheat all the time. So really, if you've got a strong roll on one side, consider, can really consider learning it on the other side for situations like this. Or let's say you get broached and the wave knocks you over. A lot of times you could even use the momentum of the wave and the wave will pop you right back up. In this video I'm showing you here, I hung out way too long thinking I still had time to edge away from this and then the wave catches me, knocks me over and along with everything I've said so far in this one, while I didn't wait until the kayak was settled, in this one I used the momentum of the wave because as I went for the setup, I already felt like the wave itself was pulling me right back out of the water. And all I had to do was go along with it and I came right back up. Sometimes you don't need to wait until everything's completely flat and perfect for you to do your roll. Uh, sometimes the wind, sometimes the wave, it might give you that push and that momentum that you can then use to your advantage. If I only had a roll, let's say on the other side, it would have been a lot harder to then reset on the water and then fight against the motion of the wave. Here, as soon as I felt that was going over, I just, I went into my muscle memory. If I was setting up for it, as soon as I felt that was going on that side, I just went for the motion, got ready, and then came up. That's where I think the wave's encouragement can turn into our muscle memory. Uh, as soon as you feel like you're going under, turn that into that muscle memory of you going for your roll. And then you don't even have to think about it. You might feel how the wave is pulling you up, and if you fail with that one, you can still put into consideration the wave is just going by. You have time to reset. You have time to take a moment, get ready, and then do your roll. But if the wave is encouraging us to pick one side or the other, let's use it to our advantage. So having a roll on either side is super advantageous in these particular moments. And the last one I want to mention, uh, and I think my friend Catherine is a really great advocate of this, is practicing the same way you're going to be out on the water. So if you're rolling in a pool, if you're rolling in really calm waters to practice for when you go out and surf, wear all your gear, wear your helmet, wear your toe belts, wear whatever extra stuff you might have, make it as close to what you're going to be doing as possible so that 
you get used to it. It doesn't matter what role you do, how you do it. Just if you're going to go practice somewhere that it's calm and you're prepping that so that you can be in rough water, it might be a good idea to just put everything you think you're going to have when you go into rougher conditions. And this also can tie back to the very first uh, thing we talked about, where sometimes doing a roll or two before the session, you'll get a sense of what it feels like to do the roll with that particular gear. Uh, another thing to think about is, for example, maybe you didn't burp your suit all the way, or maybe you've been practicing in a pool all winter without any gear on, just a shirt or a rash guard or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're out in cold water with a dry suit, lots of layers, lots of buoyancy, and it's going to feel different. For example, if you have lots of buoyancy and lots of air because you didn't burp your suit all the way, it's going to be really hard for you to drop down and get completely settled upside down for you to roll. So you might get stuck on one side or the other because you have so much flotation. So you have to be ready to then readjust, turn around, set up on the other side, and then use that buoyancy to your advantage. That's just an example. But the idea is simply whatever you might do in the surf, try to do it elsewhere first so that you're more comfortable with it. And that can tie back to all of the different tips to think about. The mind games, taking your time, feeling comfortable, picturing it all ahead of time, testing that role with all your gear on the spot will be helpful so that when you go to your muscle memory, you have adapted for whatever you happen to be wearing uh, that day. Same thing happens if you're wearing a helmet. The helmet is going to be a little bit of a drag in the water. So just test all these things ahead of time so that you can be a little more ready when you need it. So if you have any other things you want to share, uh, if any other tips, things you've done, things that have gone wrong, and I'm telling you this as someone that the ocean has had many different ideas of what I was thinking of doing at different times, and all of these tips for me really help out in bringing up my confidence level uh, for when I'm rolling and when I'm rolling in surf. If there's anything you want to add, any stories, please do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear it. If you'd like to have further conversations about this, you can head over to the membership part of the channel. A lot of stuff going on there and behind the scenes and chats and other stuff, as well as eventually there will be an archive of all the videos and all the other stuff that we're doing uh, for the membership section. Subscribe if you'd like to the channel. I'm always trying to put videos out like this. As always, Luke Robotokag Hipster. Thank you for watching and see you next time.